very good morning to all of you this is a lecture on extra oral radiography and i am dr lahari telang here the learning outcomes would be to understand extra oral radiographic uh, imaging examinations of the cranio maxillofacial region with film or sensors positioned extra orally when we begin it's important to understand few terms posterior view lateral view axial view and a sagittal uh, plane so the posterior or uh, would be x-rays coming from the posterior of the skull towards the anterior lateral means x-rays coming from the lateral side of the head axial view or axial plane is the plane which is coronal sorry cross sectional and uh, you know uh, uh, this plane in brown here which is cutting through the axial section sagittal would be um the yellow one or uh, that is cutting through the skull midway into half so radiographic uh, baseline would be the canthomeatal line from the outer canthus of the eye to the external auditory meatus the term parallel and perpendicular will also be used as well as central beam which means the center of the uh, source of x-rays uh, from the x-ray machine so generally extra oral radiography can either be done in a large radiology setup where the patient is lying down on the radiation table which is also called as a bucky table or and the source of imaging the x-ray source is from the top or they could be standing um, just like the chest x-ray in a dental setting of course it is different where the uh, patient is standing in a setup which enables extra oral radiographs and all the radiographs that i'm going to talk about can be done in the dental setting using the cephalometric section of the imaging uh, machine so this is the panoramic section or the cbct section and this section is a cephalometric section so there are guide uh, planes or um, uh, beams which help to stabilize the patient um including the forehead and the external auditory meatus so that the patient can be stable within the um machine while the x-rays are emitted from the same x-ray source the image receptor would be the sensor which is located within the uh, x-ray machine itself now conventionally uh, the in older days there were cassettes similar to this in which you had to place a film they had intensifying screens with grids and then you would require a table like i showed you in the previous image and this cassette assembly would go into a slot which is adjacent to the um, area where the patient would stand but now almost all uh, um, radiology setups have a digital imaging section in which the cephalometric or extraoral radiography can be easily done so let's look at some of the skull views and cephalometric views so <clears throat> these are various types of views that can be taken for the skull they are the lateral skull or lateral cephalometric projection uh, you have a small variant called as a true lateral skull view also then you have the submento vertex or the base view of the skull you have the waters view which is a standard occipitometal view or 30 degrees one this is preferably used for visualizing the paranasal sinuses you have the pa skull or psf which is the posterior anterior view of the skull you could also have a rotated psf when you want to see one particular side more clearly than the other then you have a reverse town view which is an open mouth view i will show you what that is you also have uh, specific mandibular views where the x-ray uh, or the image receptor is outside the mouth and you have a ramus view and a body view now these views are more or less obsolete with the um, panoramic radiograph being able to cover uh, most of the uh, structures that are visible in these views 
So let's look what a lateral cephalogram is. This is the most common view that is indicated for orthodontic treatment. The patient is, um, the, head, the side of the patient is facing the, uh, the sensor. Uh, the, <clears throat> the film or the sensor is parallel to the mid-sagittal plane of the patient and the x-rays are perpendicular to the mid-sagittal plane. So the x-rays are coming from one side of the head, the patient is facing the sensor, um, sorry, the, the another side is facing the sensor and uh, x-ray beams are directed perpendicular to the sensor and the mid-sagittal plane of the patient. So what you essentially see is, is one side of the face of the patient or the jaw of the patient superimposed over the other, jaw, other side. So this is a very good view for assessing the profile of the patient. As you can see, both soft tissue as well as hard tissue structures and of importance in orthodontic treatment planning. Next is the true lateral skull view where you see the entire skull uh, also taken in a similar manner as the previous lateral cephalogram. Now these are indicated for fractures of the cranium and cranial base to see the middle third facial fractures to investigate frontal, sphenoidal and maxillary sinuses as well. But of course they are superimposed over each other uh, and to see diseases of the skull. For example, you can observe that there are any changes in the skull in Paget's disease, multiple myeloma, hyperparathyroidism, tumors of the cell -tercica. I can see the cell -tercica quite clearly here. here. Right, and these, for example, uh, arrow is pointing out towards punched out radiolucencies in the skull, which is more likely to be due to multiple myeloma. Then you have a posterior anterior view where the patient is facing the <coughs> film or the sensor and the canthomatal line is at 10 degrees to the uh, x-ray film and uh, or the sensor and the patient, uh, the x-rays are coming from behind the skull. So the central beam is again perpendicular to the film of the sensor. So the indications for this would be fractures of the skull vault, mandibular fractures, posterior third of, of body angle rami or lower condylar neck fractures because all of these areas can be appreciated beautifully. Conditions affecting the cranium and the intracranial calcifications, mandibular and maxillofacial deformities, tumors and cysts. So essentially the posterior part of the skull is superimposing over the anterior part of the skull and all of these uh, superimposed structures can be visualized in the PA view. The term occipitofrontal is used because the x-rays are traveling from the occipital to the frontal per, uh, of the uh, skull. Waters view. This is also called as a PNS view, which means paranasal sinus view, and specifically of application in paranasal um, diagnosis. So you can see that the canthomate line is at 37 degrees to the film. The central uh, beam is perpendicular to the film. So the x-rays are still coming from behind the patient, from the occipital area. And, but the patient's head is tilted upwards so that the canthomatal line is 37 degrees and the mouth of the patient is uh, open. This is done so that the uh, sphenoidal sinuses can be clearly seen with the, on the superimposing on the palate of the patient. So the indications would be for specifically for viewing the sinuses. You can mainly see in the maxillary sinus very clearly. You can see the frontal ethmoidal sinuses also, as well as sphenoidal sinuses, which superimpose over the palate area. So this view is useful for middle third fractures, leaf fold one, two, and three fractures, zygomatic complex fractures, as you can see the zygoma clearly, nasoethmoidal and orbital blowout fractures, and also coronoid process fractures can be visualized. The submento vertex view. Now this is <clears throat> a little different from the previous views. You will notice that the patient is in the opposite direction. The x-rays are coming from the front of the patient, patient and directed towards the posterior of the skull. So uh, the canthomatal line is parallel to the film. So now you notice that the patient's head is tilted backwards and the central ray is perpendicular to the uh, sensor or the film. Now the indications for this x-ray would be fracture of the zygomatic arches. So you can see the zygomatic arches very clearly when the lower arch actually superimposes over the upper arch. And this view you should be very careful and not to be, uh, it's not indicated for anyone with uh, a cervical condition or a suspected fracture in the neck. 
So it is indicated for fractures of zygomatic arches. These thin bones are seen with reduced exposure called as a jug handle view. We'll be viewing it in the next uh, slide. Uh, destructive or expansive lesions affecting the palate, pterygo uh, pterygoid region and base of the skull as well as sphenoidal sinuses can be seen. This is the jug handle view where you can see the zygomatic arches like uh, handles of the jug and when you're expecting a fracture facial, mid facial fracture where the person has uh, for example got into a fist fight and the uh, zygoma has fractured. So you will see that the fractured zygoma caves in and very clearly visible uh, in this view. Next is a reverse tongue view. Um, probably named after the person who um, first recommended this view. This is also a posterior anterior uh, uh, view where the person's head is tilted downwards and the canthomietal line is at 30 degrees to the sensor or the film and the central beam is coming from the occipital region directed forwards uh, per perpendicular to the sensor. So the indication would be... Um, Slightly different if it's a Towns view, which is an anterior posterior view, and a reverse Towns view, which is a posterior anterior view. So the reverse Towns view is more commonly uh, used. You can see high fractures of the condylar neck here. The neck of the condyle is very clearly visible on both sides. Uh, intercapsular fractures of the TMJ and condylar hypoplasia and hyperplasia can be visualized. So uh, remember, this is also a PA view, but the patient's old cavity is open and the head is bent uh, downwards and the canthomate line is minus 30 degrees to the film. So this summarizes all the views that we have discussed, um, <clears throat> the right from the cephalometric view, submento vertex, this is your PNS view, this is a PA view, reverse town view, and these are the mandibular views. Now most of these x-rays are actually less utilized in a routine dental setting. Reason being that the panoramic and CBCT um, uh, views or images have actually made these particular images images obsolete. But nevertheless, it's important that you understand and uh, remember that there these views are also to be used in uh, low resource settings and in settings where a dental radiology setting is unavailable and you only have um, the medical radiology facility, then you would <clears throat> want to utilize these views to help you get the area or image the area that specifically that is required to be seen. So this is a summary chart which shows you which view can show you which part of the body. I feel it's a very useful chart and shows you how useful that particular view is for visualizing a particular area. For example, if you were to look at the body of the mandible, then uh, the lateral ceph and submental vertex have low usefulness, whereas a PA view and oblique body of the mandible or a panoramic have medium to high usefulness. So that is uh, to summarize all the extra oral views that are uh, present.